time! Yay! Here's a picture of me as a small child, trick-or-treating on Halloween as Mickey Mouse. Yeah, whoever took this picture decided I was only half relevant to it. Some of you younger folk might be asking, what's up with that Mickey Mouse costume? Why would Mickey Mouse have a weird design print on his chest with a picture of himself? Welcome to the world of Ben Cooper Inc., an American corporation that made Halloween costumes from the late 1930s all the way to the late 1980s. Today, when you think of a costume of a licensed intellectual property, you expect that the costume will look like the property. If you wear a Captain America costume, you will be dressed as Captain America. That's what a costume is by definition. But it wasn't always like this. Ben Cooper Halloween costumes tended to involve a plastic mask held on by a string and a strange vinyl smock that oftentimes featured art of the character themselves. There were exceptions. For example, this C-3PO costume actually looks like C-3PO. But all in all, this was pretty much the standard for Halloween costumes of popular characters all the way into the late 80s. I gotta tell you, these costumes are scary in their own way. Look at this cat costume. Look at this clown. Things got really weird when the masks were real human faces. Like the Fonz here. Or oh my god, I could wear Bo Duke's face. Today, Ben Cooper costumes are valuable collector items, especially if they're still in their boxes. Just look at some of these asking prices on eBay. Yikes. But today we're going to take a quick look at the Ben Cooper Godzilla costume. I have one here, and it's not in great shape because I really don't want to go broke buying this. I have seen different boxes for this costume. I have this one, which is under the Famous Faces name. I've seen other designs online. Uh, this one here has Godzilla art on the cover. What is he, attacking himself? While other boxes have him as Godzilla King of the Monsters, mine well, doesn't say anything on the front, actually. Oh, here we go. The side says Godzilla. And as you can see, this is an officially licensed Godzilla product. There are some interesting notes on the back here. Look at how the first point they want to make is that it's flame retardant. Now, I do remember playground rumors of these suits being highly flammable, and you'll still see people say that today online. What an interesting thing to feature. Can you imagine you go to Party City to buy an Olaf costume for your kid, and the first thing the sales guy tells you is, this absolutely will not catch fire. Also, don't wash it, or you'll lose that protection. And it will catch fire. It's non-toxic. Again, I didn't know toxic Halloween costumes were a problem. Color bright! The most brilliant fabrics and decorations are used, consistent with character design. Are you sure about that? Next, they're bragging about the giant eye holes, and it's like, just don't. These were not comfortable, and you need to turn your entire head to see your peripherals. And let's talk about the mask fasteners permanently attached. Oh, you mean this half rubber band you stapled onto the plastic? All right, let's see if this costume is, quote, consistent with character design. Nope. I'm not confident that most people looking at this mask would guess it's Godzilla. You can forgive the mask for having a very flat snout, but what's with these yellow horns on his head? Godzilla's got big red eyes, and then one upper row of sharp teeth. He's spitting out four little fireballs here, but kind of looks like he just shoved a handful of candy corn into his mouth. Let's put it this way, if I designed this monster and went public with it, I don't think Toho would sue me. But let's move on to the smock. There are a couple different versions of this smock out there. I have this one. There's an attempt here to replicate Godzilla's scales with these yellow accents. Then we have a picture of Godzilla himself, and he's still got those horns! His eyes are super red and really bulging out here, like somebody just shoved a hot pepper in his butt. He's just vomiting pure fire straight down to the legs, which are entirely red. So I guess when you wear this, your entire lower body is just fire. So much for flame retardant, am I right? The other version of the smock ditches the scales and just gives you the Godzilla art. I don't currently own it, but I should also mention there's a Ben Cooper King Kong costume. This one's art is based directly off of the 1976 remake poster, and in that regard, yeah, it's pretty accurate right down to his hot red lipstick. This one's smock tries to replicate his body hair and of course has Kong on it, jeez. Why do I feel like every playtime video I do somehow gets back to the Twin Towers? So, that's the Ben Cooper Godzilla Halloween costume. The price for this on eBay will vary based on condition and what have you, but 
I'd only recommend adding this to your collection if it has nostalgic value to you, or if the focus of your collection is this 1970s American-made memorabilia. In terms of masks, I'll stick to my more screen-accurate Godzilla mask, thank you very much. Actually, this mask isn't even officially licensed, and it's not even sold as a Godzilla mask, but instead labeled as Fire Dragon. For those of you wondering, I got this at a pop-up Spirit Halloween store, where they were sold two for 99 cents. I don't have much else to say about this Ben Cooper Godzilla costume, except I'd like to see if these things really are highly flammable like they say- Yeah! <laughs>